right. So we've got a question that I get asked a lot in tutoring sessions. Um, because it's a function question, I think that people aren't very familiar with function questions. So they get thrown for a bit of a loop, especially when it's something that's a little bit different than what they've been taught in the past. Uh, and what makes this different is looking, I think, at this first term here where we've got the addition of two terms on the inside, A plus B. What that's really saying is, okay, if we pick numbers, which is a very, very useful way to solve any situation where you're dealing with difficult variables, and we say A is equal to 2 and B is equal to 3, then A plus B is equal to 5. And what I want to do is I want to find a situation in which f of 5 is equal to f of 2 plus f of 3. And some people can see this at a high level, but for most of us, we're going to want to plug through the numbers. Um, so let's look at answer choice A. A says f of x equals x squared. Okay, well, I think the way to stay organized on this is to set up a little grid. So I would say we make a column for f of a, f of b, or f of a plus b, and f of a, and f of b, and then finally f of a plus f of b. And I just want to compare the first column and the last column. So f of 5 in this situation so f of 5, just to paint the first example, is going to equal 5 squared. Whatever goes in place of the parentheses in here is going to go in place of x. Whatever we have in parentheses is equal to x is what this first function is telling us. So we're going to get 5 squared, which is equal to 25. All right, now if I step back over here, and look at the original function again. Looking at what we'll get for f of 2, f of 2 is going to equal, and let's just draw these out here so we have them easily available. f of 2 is going to equal 4, and f of 3 is going to equal 9. And so f of 2 plus f of 3 is going to equal 13 which is not equal to 25. So this is obviously out. B says f of x is equal to x plus 1. So for f of 5, that's going to be 6, 5 plus 1. And then for f of 2, we're going to get 3. And for f of 3, we're going to get 4. And 6 does not equal 3 plus 4. So that, again, is out. Looking at C, Square root of x is what f of x is equal to. Well, the square root of 5 versus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. This is just not how square roots work. And we could prove this out in some sort of an example. But if you know that basically this square root is equal to 1.4 and this one's equal to about 1.7, when you add these together, and this is something, by the way, that you should know going into test day, and most people don't, and I think that that is a nice way to check your math on more difficult problems that involve uh, square roots, especially common ones like root 2 and root 3, which you see a lot in geometry. So when I add up 1.4 and 1.7, what I get is 3.1, which is nowhere near 5, or the square root of 5, which would be because if I square 3.1, I'm going to get 9 point something. And so the square root of 9 is 3.1, which means the square root of 5 is definitely not 3.1. It's going to be actually less than 3. It's going to be closer to 2. So I know for a fact that these don't work. And also, this is just not a rule in terms of dealing with exponents, which radicals are a type of exponent. So we've gotten through C, and we still don't have an answer choice. Which brings me to something I wanted to tell you at the beginning, but I didn't want to spoil the surprise. So typically on questions where you're going to plug numbers, you want to start at the bottom and work your way up because the author is going to hide the right answer in the bottom more often than not so that you have to go through each of the uh, options before you finally discover the right answer. So my advice is start with E. If they hide it in A, good for them. It's not probably going to happen that often. 
just because from a strategic standpoint, they're trying to dissuade you from finding the answer quickly. Um, they want to make it a little bit more difficult and involve some more logic than simply blindly choosing. And I'll discuss the logic behind this question when we get to the end to show you how you could have thought about this from a higher level from the very get go. But looking at answer choice D, so we know F of X in D is equal to two over X. So we would have two over five versus two over two plus two over three. Well, two over two is equal to one. So one and two thirds versus two fifths, that's definitely not equal. This is gonna be greater than one. This is way less than one, which means E has to be our answer. So let's look at the math in E. We have f of x equals negative three, which means negative three times five equals negative three times two plus negative three times times three. And is this true? Well, negative 15 equals negative six minus nine. That is true. And the reason it's true is because of a property known as distribution. And so distribution is the ability to pull out a common factor and use addition or subtraction in between those common terms. So we could have said negative 15 is equal to negative three times two plus whatever we need to multiply negative three by again, since we pulled it out. So we pulled out on both sides here, and that is this three here. And the reason we have an addition symbol is that addition symbol right there. And so negative three times five, which is exactly what we had on the left-hand side. So of course they're equal. So if you were able to see the distribution from a high level, you would have known that answer choice E was a logical place to start. Um, answer choice B, we end up adding the number one twice. And answer choice A is something you should know from probably working around with the Pythagorean theorem. There's no property where if you add two, the squared version of two numbers, you get the same thing as those two numbers added together squared. Otherwise we wouldn't need Pythagorean theorem. We would just add the two sides to get the third side. So I think that there's a couple things that right away I'm looking at A and B and I recognize those can't be the answer. Um, a and C are very similar because you're essentially dealing with exponents. And when you deal with exponents, things work in a nonlinear fashion. Um, whereas in E, we're working in a very linear fashion. Um, D is just a little bit funky to think about, but basically you don't have a rule for adding together bases. If you think about the way that adding fractions work, we can add the tops, but never the bottoms. Um, so that, that's another way to think of this at a high level, but if you're able to plug through it, it's not the worst problem in the world. I definitely recommend that you stay organized with some sort of a chart. I don't think that mine was the prettiest thing in the world, but that said, it got the job done. So I hope that made sense. Functions are a little tough, um, given practice and, and definitely some number picking. I think that they're easily solvable.